Hello everyone and welcome to another very nice game from the Speed Chess Championship semi-finals uh, Hikaru Nakamura versus Nihal Sarin, we've already seen one game and uh, you guys said that okay, uh, Hikaru won the match, we all know that now uh, and I showed a game uh, where Nihal won but the game that he won was absolutely spectacular and I absolutely had to uh, show that one and even though I will discuss what happened uh, uh, in the match for for example here they play like 30 games uh, but I'm interesting, interested in the in individual games like uh, if someone won a match but uh, did not play any interesting games and someone won like two very interesting games I will show those two games that are very interesting uh, regardless of who won the match uh, so that's why I chose uh, to show Nihal's game first uh, but okay uh, let's check out one more uh, this one's also very nice as it features uh, the H opening and no it's not actually the Hikaru opening although uh, first, I thought that's why uh, Hikaru uh, chose to play it, uh, but uh, in the in the first game with the white pieces that he had, he opened with a3. Now the second game with the white pieces, he opens with h3. It's actually the Clemens opening, and Hikaru said that okay, the World Ch Ch the World Rapid and Blitz Championship is starting in ten days. Uh, he doesn't want to. Uh, you know, overstress himself over over this um, speech chess championship. He wants to enjoy it. He wants to you know casually uh, uh, play it, and uh, th that's why he didn't uh, uh, you know just uh, go for some top top engine theory, uh, but rather went for some uh, fun games with a three and h three. Uh, but okay, still you have to play against him. It, it is Hikaru. He's over twenty nine hundred, and Nihal replies with pawn to e five, and it's a very principled the reply to. Um, uh, to, to the H pawn as it grabs the center and uh, white really didn't do all that much with the H pawn and okay c4 by Hikaru knight to f6 we have knight to c3 and knight to c6 and already as of move 3 we have a completely new game Hikaru goes for g4 makes sense as uh, you already played h3 you might as well grab more space with g4 preparing g5 so h6 and bishop to g2 we have bishop to b4 and now knight to f3 just preparing to Nicely castle king side e4. Uh, Nihal grabs more space in the center. Uh, this lodges the knight from f3. Knight to h4 and now pawn to d5. And okay. Uh, here Hikaru has to play something. C captures on d5. Knight captures and now bishop captures on e4. We have knight, bishop to e6 now. Adding a defender to the knight. And now Hikaru goes knight to f5. So Hikaru is up a pawn. Uh, but his um, his position is objectively better, but it's uh, very, very hard to say. I mean, this is completely new territory. None of them ever had this on the board. And it's uh, Blitz. It's 5 plus 1. Uh, it's completely crazy. So here, Nikhal castles a3 and now bishop to c5. And uh, here you have to go bishop to a5. With bishop to c5, you allow white to throw in this d4 move with tempo. And that just uh, kickstarts um, uh, white's entire setup. So here, pawn to d4. Bishop Bishop to b6 and pawn to e3 now. We have rook to e8 by Nihal and now uh, Hikaru castles king side. And now you have to decide how to go about this position. Do you uh, try to remaneuver the knight, maybe knight to a5, then to, uh, to c4, or do you move the knight so maybe you gain access to the b3 square, or you're going to shift the knight to the king side with knight e7, uh, challenge the knight on f5, maybe remaneuver the knight to g6. Nihal does none of that. He goes pawn to h5. Hikaru already opened up his king, and Nihal will try to take advantage of this. Uh, so uh, uh, h5, bishop back to g2, and this is a super classy move by Hikaru. Basically, he sees very far ahead into the future, and he knows that he needs the e4 move uh, for, for everything to work. And look at this now, h captures on g4, h captures pawn to g6 now, attacks the knight, knight to h6 check, king to g7, attacks the knight, and now pawn to e4, attacks the knight on d5, and also defends his knight on h6. That's why bishop to g2 uh, was such a, such a strong move. So knight captures on c3, B captures and now bishop to c4 goes after the rook here, rook to e1 and queen to h4. And look at Nihal's position now, the bishop pair uh, absolutely beautiful, the queen excellently placed on the h file, the rook on the e file, the other rook coming to d file. Uh, seems like the, the it's a dream position, uh, but it, it only seems that way. In reality, uh, Nihal doesn't really have a, a good move here. Uh, Hikaru plays g5, he cements his knight on h6, and now rook 8 to d8, sort of fully completing his development, but Hikaru just plays queen to f3, and there is no way to increase the pressure for Nihal. 
it, it's only it, it only looks good but Hikaru's center is so strong uh you you just can't do anything against that so here uh the problem is the the f6 square and even if you move the king let's say king to h7 uh, you don't even have to capture on f7, you can play knight g4, now you're gonna get the knight to f6, fork the rook and the king, if you go back then queen to f6 check, it's just a really really uh, bad position for Nihal, so instead he tries knight captures on d4, uh, he opens up the center, and it's not bad, okay, giving up one piece for two of those amazing central pawns, uh, should be good, c captures on d4, Bishop captures on d4, and now the rook is also hanging on a1, but Hikaru says I'm not interested in material, bishop to f4, you can have your rook, uh, you've already given up one piece, uh, and uh, there's really nothing better, Nihal grabs the rook on a1, Hikaru captures on a1, and now Nihal plays queen to h5, even though his position is completely lost, but he's also very low on time, he tried queen to h5, but here he blundered the bishop, here Hikaru just played queen to c3 with check, and he was in this position, unmove 26, that Nihal Sarin resigned the game, as there is nothing more uh, to be done here. Uh, so really, uh, as this was uh, uh, the uh, basically Hikaru's first win in the, or no, it w it w maybe it was Hikaru's second win, let me just check, I don't want to trick you guys, uh, let me just check real quickly. Uh, yeah, this was uh, Hikaru's second win in, in the match, but his first win with the white pieces, and it's very uh, interesting how he did it with pawn to h3. He, he first, uh, the first game he tried uh, with pawn to a3, but the dead game ended in a draw, and if you guys are interested in all the, uh, in all the, sorry, not that, in all the time, uh, formats uh, here, you can see that in 5 plus 1, uh, Hikaru uh, won 5 points, Nihal won 3, so Hikaru wins the 5 plus 1 section, then in 3 plus 1, it was equal, uh, Nihal really started fighting uh, fighting back, uh, 4.5 to 4.5, but then in bullet, again, uh, Hikaru was better by 2 points, 5 uh, to 3, and in the end, uh, Hikaru wins the match with 14.5 to 10.5, which is uh, a very very close and uh, by far the best anyone did against Hikaru in this speed chess championship match as you can see uh, Paravian scored seven and a half points against Hikaru Aronian uh, scored eight and a half and uh, Nihal Sarin scored ten and a half against Hikaru and now Hikaru is in the finals waiting uh, uh, for the winner of the match Magnus Carlsen versus Va Maxime Vachel Lagrave which will uh, be taking place today so we'll see who wins and who will face Hikaru in the finals. Uh, so yeah, uh, Hikaru already won four speeches championships, so this will be his fifth attempt, uh, and we'll see if uh, if he can do it or or he will uh, will he go all out against the Magnus if he wins if Magnus wins against the uh, MVL uh, or will he play against Nihal maybe some A3 maybe some H3 stuff and save whatever he has prepared for the uh, World Rapid and Blitz Championship that will be taking place uh, I think from 26th to 30th uh, of of uh, December. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game and a little bit of extra info about the match. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed that. And uh, it, just because someone plays h3 against you doesn't know it's necessarily a bad move. Like it, it's bad if your opponent plays absolute perfect moves, but you know, you're, you're going to play g4, you're going to Fienchetto, your bishop, you're going to win the full center like Hikaru and the black. Uh, black could be very well struggling for his life the, the entire game, like, like was the case here. Uh, so yeah, once again, hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Chris Robert Picard, Sapan Batia, uh, Sarah Hamilton, uh, uh, Jonathan Hirschi, and Closebox for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world. Uh, thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.